All right. <clears throat> we got a lot to talk about. Uh, the Colts make several errors and completely blow what was almost a guaranteed spot in the playoffs three weeks ago. The Chargers make an error, error last night that could have cost them the playoffs. The Dolphins make a serious error that will cost them a spot in the playoffs. And oh, this in, finally, Matt Nagy no longer has a job. Sheesh, that took forever. I, I've been saying that for like, what, eight weeks? At least, yeah. Uh, we, we need to run a clip of just that. Matt Nagy has a job. Matt Nagy has a job. And then finally, Matt Nagy doesn't have a job and uh, play for the Bears fans. Uh, all this plus the season wrap up and the playoff breakdown coming up on the Horseman Pro Football Talk podcast. All right, here we go. Welcome back to another edition of the Horseman Pro Football Talk podcast. This is the 2021-2022 season wrap up, regular season wrap up. I'm Brad. Hey, this is Zach. And I'm Hefe. We uh, we want you to join our Patreon community. We're doing a whole bunch of stuff next year that's going to be really cool. It's like a dudes club. We're all going to be in there. Go to Horseman Sports right now and join us. Uh, Horsemansports.com and, and join us. Um. That's pretty much almost. I've been I've been beating that to death. Let's let's keep moving. Pigskin pick 'em leaders. Man, Zach's got a story to tell. <laughs> yeah. So uh, going into Sunday, I was uh, well. I guess going into Saturday, technically, I was what four games back, fourth place. Uh, Sunday morning rolls around. I'm sitting here thinking to you. I'm like, you know what? I need to make a move. So I went in probably changed uh i think i changed five or six games for sunday and i hit on every single one except for one uh which ended up moving me one game behind in second place uh, there's a tie at the top so technically i'm third uh, but i jumped up there i made all this ground and the one game that screwed me was i took carolina panthers who've been screwing me all season long over the tampa bay buccaneers and they uh, they led for a while didn't they yeah yeah they started off with the lead so had i hit that game i would have tied uh for the pigskin pick em winning championship number one spot but uh i didn't do that ultimately i finished second but i made up a lot of ground and i had texted willie on the west side and you guys and said uh before sunday started i made some changes and i was making a move and i'm coming for the top and i almost pulled it off yeah you did you you really did. Uh, cra- it was a crazy another another crazy ass day. We're gonna get into all that, and uh, and you you almost took it. So congratulations to t- uh, Todd Haney and Willie on the west side, Chris Williams, uh, for finishing first. Um, we don't know what your prize is yet, but we're gonna fix that. We're gonna we're gonna get them something, and uh, and then we're and then we're gonna up the ante next year for next year's pigskin pick them. That's why you want to be in our Patreon community. We're going to up the ante and have some nice prizes next year uh, for all this. So uh, anyway, congratulations to them. Congratulations to you, Zach, for moving up. Uh, and Hefe and I are, are just glad that it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was making a nice little late season run. You know, this past week had Zach, uh, it sounds like had Zach not made a bunch of changes, I would have dominated this week Mm -hmm. uh, compared to everybody else. So, you know, I made a little late season run, but it was a little too, too little, too late. A little too late. Who, who won the week? Me. Uh, Did you win it outright, Zach? Okay. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, What a crazy season. And it was, it was even crazy yesterday, all the way up to the last, literally the last minute. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, I, I just, I don't know where we want to start with all this. Uh, I hadn't, there's so much to cover. Um, let, let's start there. Let's start with the game last night. Rumor has it, the Raiders were going to let the clock run out and go with the tie, which would have included the Chargers and eliminated the Steelers. But the Chargers called a timeout with what, 38 seconds left or something like that? 35 seconds, yep. And uh, and the Raiders, I think, ran one more play, got close enough and kicked the field goal and won. So um, I didn't I didn't watch the end of that. I wish I would have. I heard it was a really, really good game. What was the motivation for calling the timeout? That's a very good question. 
Yeah, that that's a great question. I was I watched that entire game, and you could tell by the demeanor of the Raiders players that they they didn't have any intentions of you know let's go get this first down. It was all right, let's, let's just run the timeout. Nobody get hurt on this play. We have to run. You know they had to want run one more play, and it didn't look like they were going to try. It. And then they came out from the timeout, you know, and then they obviously they get like the what 12 to it was like a 12 or 15 yard rush by Josh Jacobs put him in field goal range and yeah I mean it, when Brandon Staley takes that time out it's just I mean the whole world knew what was about to happen that game is going to finish in a tie both of them were going to the playoffs and instead you know after having a great game calling the game you know they were what six for six on fourth down or something crazy mm-hmm. like that like it had gone in their favor to get them back in that game and uh, he gave he gave the Raiders life at the end and paid for it Wow. It's crazy. And it's really crazy when you realize that the Steelers game, uh, there were almost two ties yesterday in the regular season that would have drastically affected uh, the playoff scenario. That's the whole reason the Steelers got in was uh, because there was uh, there was almost a tie and there wasn't. And then turn around, the Steelers would have been eliminated on a tie. Um, That that's what I mean, that that last 38 seconds sums up this entire year all in itself, I think. Um, anyway, what's done is done. Uh, you know, someone said, uh, looks like John Madden's had some influence over the Raiders the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's true or not, but um, it's pretty cool from that standpoint. Um, and I don't want to defend Chucky because I don't, you know, if, if the things that were said, there's a lot to that story. Um, obviously, the things that were said shouldn't have been said. As a coach, I like the guy, um, and I feel sorry for the players the way things went down in the middle of the season. But um, they're stringing it together, so I guess there's no reason to feel sorry for anybody at that point anymore, huh? Yeah, I mean, and, and you talk about you know the whole Chucky thing, but then I mean, right after that, it was the Henry Rugg situation. He's yeah. off the team. Right, I mean, a couple of days after that, uh, Damon Arnett gets released. He was a former first round pick for them, and he did some stupid shit on Instagram, and and so they had to release him. I mean, it was a wild time, and it looked like the Raiders were dead. They lost three games in a row going into the end of the season, and then uh, I think what well, they finished the season on a four game winning streak. You know, so when it mattered. Uh, Derek Carr and the rest of that team came up big, even with Darren Waller out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, they're in. That's at this point today, that's all that matters. Who's in, who's not. Uh, because there are a lot of teams who are not playing next weekend, uh, Indianapolis being one of them. I, and I don't want to talk about the Colts just yet. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up uh, the, the other big news on the other side of the country here on my side. I am in shock, absolute disbelief that the Dolphins have let Brian Flores go. Did any of you watch the press conference? After he was fired? Or after the game? After after he was fired. No, I I did not. With Steve Ross? F.A., did you watch Steve Ross's? I didn't watch his press conference. I just saw a couple of the clips. Yeah, so... uh, I before the press conference, when I heard the news, I knew right away this is over Tua. I, I I firmly believe this is over Tua, and he was directly asked, and he bounced around the question and would not answer, other than said about eight times, "I have a lot. I have all the faith in the world with Tua." Uh, um, I I I don't know, man. I mean, you know, the one what they start one and seven, that's rough. Uh, they got it flipped around to a certain degree. We saw them win with Fitzpatrick last year. We saw the change, and then they've struggled since then, been 500 up and down. Um, I have to believe that you have a different quarterback in there. You have, uh, hell, even Fitzpatrick, but, you know, uh, you have Matt Ryan or um, Kirk Cousins or, you know, Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, I think, with that team uh, is a 12-win team. I think they, I think they've shot themselves in the foot. Um, I think they forgot how fucked up things were with, uh, with Adam Gase there is what they did. Um, but it sounds like it's a personnel problem, man, to me, I, I either, either Flores wasn't getting along with, with the owner and the GM, or he wanted Tua gone. And there was a difference of opinion on Tua. I, I have to, I have to believe it. I can't imagine why they would let him go after two years of not making the playoffs. 
uh, after the disaster that came out. Do either of you guys have any opinions on this? Yeah, so here, here's what I think, uh, and this even extends back to last season. You brought up the Fitzpatrick swap when they first put two in uh, as a starting quarterback. We had discussed that what were the reasoning behind that, and I said, I don't think it's going to be uh, Brian. I don't think that was a Brian Flores move. That sounded like it was above his head up in the front office, maybe all the way up to Ross and the ownership, uh, forcing them to play their top five draft pick over Fitzpatrick because they had a good team around him and they were going to make Tua look good and all this. And we know how that all turned out. Uh, the Dolphins weren't the same after they switched. So when it comes to this season, uh, the rumors were Deshaun Watson waived his no trade clause to go to Miami to play with Brian Flores. Uh, so you have a general manager who – drafted Tua who tried who forcibly inserted him in the previous season you have a head coach who didn't want Tua who it's publicly known that Deshaun Watson wants to come to Miami to play for so there's that rift between Brian Flores Tua and the front office uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if that is why he is being shipped out because he is not getting along with the front office or the owner uh, they have totally different philosophies on who should be in who should be out when it comes to starting quarterback uh, so that's my two cents on it I definitely think it has to do with Tua uh, and I, I don't know it's it's very surprising because Brian Flores is a good coach and he instantly just became the hottest candidate out there in the league right now. And I guarantee you all these teams that just fired their head coaches are clamoring to get Brian Flores in the door. Oh, for without a doubt. W without a doubt. I've even seen Colts fans who are calling for Reich's head today um, saying that, that they <clears> – <throat> that – Ursay needs to make a move and go ahead and fire Reich and bring in Brian Flores. I, I we'll get into that. I don't necessarily think that's the case, but you, you we all three agree. I was gonna say, you know how I feel about Flores. We all three agree. Flores it, it appears to be a pretty damn good coach. Only time's gonna tell, but I agree with you. He'll be he'll be hot. So where do you think he goes, Hefe? Um, that I'm not sure of. I'm sure it'll be somewhere where um, you know, a place he can get along with the GM. That's probably going to be something he's going to worry about. Cause that, that's what I've heard is that um, him and the GM weren't getting, getting along. And it was basically like one guy has to go and Brian Flores is uh, taking the fall in that one. And I think, you know, Denver, they had Vic Fangio, right? Defensive coach. They, they are wanting to interview Dan Quinn, defensive coach, and Gerard Mayo, defensive coach. So they want to keep it in that defensive sphere. And with the kind of team that Denver has, and as good as that team is, they're a quarterback away. Um, you know, pretty everybody knows that they're a quarterback away. They get somebody decent. They can make a run. I think you, if you insert a coach like Brian Flores in there, now that he has a couple years under his belt, um, it's still a learning process, which is one of the most shocking parts of him getting fired. You know, he's still so young in the head coaching game. But I think Denver would be uh, the most attractive spot for me to see De uh, Flores land. What do you think, Zach? Uh, I mean, that's a that's a really good argument. Uh, personally, I think Minnesota would be the best option for a head coach to go to. Uh, they have young studs all across the board. Uh, they just need a different change in culture, and they're going to get that with the new coach. Uh, but as far as teams without a head coach that are ready to win right now, I would put my money on the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, so. If I was Flores, mm -hmm. I'd entertain that. I mean, that, that that that's a huge, huge jump to go from Miami to Minnesota. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, but money talks. Look, I, I live I live in Southwest Florida for a reason. But if somebody was going to pay me that kind of money, I would move to Minnesota. True. Um, you can really crank your thermostat up, not worry about your monthly bill, that kind of paycheck. I, I the Viking the Vikings make sense. So if Flores goes to the Vikings, uh, does Watson follow him? I don't know. It's the, with the whole legal thing going on with Watson, that's so so iffy right now. Yeah. So it'd be interesting if Flores goes to Minnesota, Watson goes to Minnesota, and then where does Kirk Cousins go? Denver. Denver. There you go. Yeah. Indianapolis. I was thinking about that yesterday. I would not – that wouldn't be the worst situation. I don't know. You know, primetime games probably wouldn't go well, but Jesus Christ, man. 
Yeah. So let's, uh, I, I guess we should talk about the elephant in the room then, huh? Um, I mean, we don't need to beat a dead horse. Yesterday was the, one of the, the biggest, it might be the biggest NFL meltdown I've ever seen. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I didn't have any, I don't have any words for it. I don't understand. Um, even more so than last year, allowing the Jags to beat him. Now I, the Patriots beat the Dolphin or the Dolphins beat the Patriots in Miami for like the fourth time or fifth time in a row. The Jags beat the Colts in Jacksonville for the sixth time in a row. There's some places you, it's just tough to win, but I'm telling you, man, uh, I, and I don't need to convince either of you that that should not have happened. It should not have happened at all. And I don't, I don't, I don't know. What do you guys, what do you guys, you got any comments about yesterday? You want to talk about it? I mean, there's a hell of a lot to say about it. That's for damn sure. Uh, it's, I, go ahead. I, we have, de- we have defended <clears throat> the ginger Jesus on this show repeatedly. Uh, and everything that we said to defend him was absolutely correct. The guy had a shitty season last year. He comes to a new team. Uh, preseason's disrupted. He's got COVID. He's got injuries. He's got a confidence problem. There's so many things. But, dude, with this running game, all the guy had to do was manage the game and every once in a while just flick a complete plat- pass for a first down. And he couldn't even do that the last two weeks. And I, I, I was just, I've just been waiting through all the conversations we've had. I've waited for him to step up and be the quarterback that Frank Reich has said that he could be, uh, and it didn't happen. So now we're now we're stuck, man. From a from a personnel standpoint, and I'm not talking about from a fan standpoint. And there's so many people. I I I think I texted you guys yesterday. Somebody already was like, "This wouldn't happen had we kept Brissett." I, you know, I'm. I, <laughs> so thank God somebody said we would have been blown out by forty, um, but. I mean, do you invest? Do, I, and and Hefe, I know I know you know a lot more about the contract situation. I do know to cut our losses right now, and for them to walk away from him and go in another direction is way cheaper than it's going to be if they keep him. So it's a hell of an investment to keep him around another year. I I know Frank Reich is saying all the right things. This is our guy. Blah 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 blah. But in the end, it's not going to be completely his decision. Ursay's been around the block a whole lot of times. Uh, Ballard's going to have something to say. You guys think he'll be back next season? Do you think he should be back next season? So, <clears throat> all right. I think next year they will have wins and they will have Reich back. And this is the put up or shut up year for either or of those two gentlemen um it's this team is way too stacked we had the most pro bowlers in the entire nfl on one team and, and then you get the playoffs no you get beat by the worst team in the league who has the number one draft pick uh and bar- they were dom- absolutely dominated it yeah. was embarrassing yeah it was embarrassing so it's uh yeah i think next year is gonna be the put up or shut up year for both of them um honestly if there is a better hire out there, I think the the problem with Reich is I think he needs to give up the play calling. Uh, and I kind of alluded to that earlier in the season. Uh, very questionable play calls throughout the year that have cost us football games and cost us a chance to go to the playoffs, and you just can't have that. Uh, so I think he needs to give up the play calling. When it comes down to it, both of them will have one more year to show what they can do with this team if not a change needs to be made. The only exception I would probably – uh, make this off season would be to bring in Aaron Rodgers. That's, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> no, ser- seriously, because he's going to be a free agent. So I mean, if but I, I I think I mean he's not he's not coming in. Yeah, I, mean, I, <clears throat> I, I don't know. Get Pat McAfee in his ear a little bit more. You know, uh, might come hang out, be buddy that's buddy. Po- that's possible. And he, and it's a turnkey operation. I mean, he walks in their Super Bowl contenders right out of the gate. Oh yeah. But, the guys, I mean, the guy's in a pretty good situation where he is, and he's from out west. Um, I, I mean, never say never, right? I mean, maybe. maybe no, nah, one can, one can hope, but yeah, yeah when hope. when it comes down to it, I think both of them have one year. 
Well, and I, I think you're, you're right. Um, I don't want to get, I want to hear what Hefe has to say, but I think you're right from the standpoint that I think if Reich went in another direction at quarterback, then may, then maybe he, you know, depending on what happens with injuries or whatever the case may be. Um, but I think, I think if he, if he hangs on to Wentz, man, he stands in front of him. I think, I think he, he, he's living or dying on that hill. I, I, oh, I he's, he, he's already made that commitment. Cause you, you just gave up a first round pick for Carson Wentz. So yeah. uh, you've, you've taken away that opportunity to have a future. Uh, and so you, uh, they're tied at the hip at this point. Uh, they're stuck together for next year, unless a big name like Aaron Rodgers or somebody comes about that you're able to Kirk snag Cousins. up and make him a, Matt yeah, I, I, honestly, I would take Kirk. I don't know about Matt Ryan. He's, he's getting a little ancient, but uh, Kirk Cousins, he's a pretty solid quarterback. He had 33 touchdowns, only seven interceptions this year. It was their yeah. defense that held the Vikings back. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's they're tied at the hip in my opinion so they i think they will have one more year and uh yeah it's prove it time yeah i mean at this point it doesn't it doesn't make sense with the way carson's contract is structured doesn't make sense to let him go now it's if you cut him there's a 15 million dollar cap hit anyway so you keep him on the roster um you have sam ellinger the to back him up and and the limited action that we were able to see him he looked athletic and can make some good throws so you know that's something where um you know just like brad was saying i i've been right there as one of carson's biggest supporters i i try to to spin things in ways that that you know it's going to be okay carson's going to figure it out but what we saw, you know, not only just – you talk about the last four weeks of the season, right? It, it's time to go. It's time to get in playoff mode. The rest of the team was going. Outside of one drive in Arizona, Carson Wentz didn't do shit for four weeks of the season in the most important time of the season. And what we wanted to see from the beginning of the year to the end of the year was growth. We didn't need you to be Superman from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. We needed to see you grow. He, and we he didn't appeared see to be growing up until about four weeks ago. Right. And, and we, which, again, is, is the most key part of the season. And, and I, I don't want to put that all on Carson because I do think that Frank calling the plays is a problem. Um, he needs to – I don't know if Marcus Brady's the play caller. Probably not. Um, you need to find an OC that can call the plays and take care of the offense so you as a head coach can handle the responsibilities. It's your responsibility to get to use other coaches to delegate so that you can worry about the big picture, so that you can worry about getting your guys ready for the most important games of the fucking year. Like they And they didn't have that. Every time you watch Hard Knocks, Colts in season, what do you see? It's Frank Reich sitting in the quarterback room. Frank Reich needs to be able to address the entire team. He needs to delegate that position to somebody else. So I agree um, also that he needs to get rid of uh, the the play calling. Dude. That's going to continue to hold him back at this point. Um, you know, he's four seasons in, and you talk about your players getting better all the time. You need to practice what you preach. You got to get better. You have to see what's working, what's not working. And right now, Frank has some uh, self-evaluation that needs to happen because if if they don't go and win with, with the way this roster is, with the way Chris Ballard has put this roster, there's so much talent on both sides of the ball. Eber Flus is lucky that he has so much talent on that side of the ball because his defense is dog shit. And, and Frank... Um, you know, if he doesn't win 12 games in a playoff game next year, then you talk about him being on the hot seat next to any other coach. Yeah, well, the, uh, Indianapolis fans are pissed, uh, and and rightfully so. I, I'm pissed. I, I'm not ready to, to. I'm not ready to put right in front of a firing squad uh, because I, I believe in what he's doing. I, I don't. I don't. I don't have any excuses. There are no excuses for what happened, especially the last two weeks, but. Um, but Indianapolis, uh, at least half of the the fan base wants him gone. And I would think if they, they don't win 12 games and miss the playoffs next year, uh, or say will have no choice. He'll, uh, what, I don't care how much he likes the guy, how much he believes in what he's doing at that point, it's a PR disaster to keep the guy any longer. And it, it, it may be close to that now, unless they can come out and win. And, and I think, I think he's the guy for the job. I, 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 but I, some changes have to be made. Uh, you know, obviously some of the things we talked about here, but 
I, I'm sure there's a whole bunch more. And Reich said a lot of the a lot of the right things today that he they're going to break every, all the film down. They're going to try to figure out what was going on. And um, but it, none of that matters, man. W's are the only thing that matters. Um, so, all right. So um, Flores and Watson to Indianapolis. <laughs> I'd stay far and clear away from Watson at yeah. this point, but um, hey, Flores might be a good good hire. Yeah, and hey, what about this Vic Fangio taking over DC? I I love that. As soon as he lost his job, that's what I was hoping was that's that a good he call comes right in there. All the defense, yep. That's a real good call. I ha- I hadn't even thought about that. I um, and I was just sitting here thinking, um, maybe Flores. Maybe Flores goes to um, goes to Jacksonville because then he's got the reverse problem. He has a franchise quarterback who looked pretty good yesterday, um, and it looks since that Urban Circus is over, it, maybe the kid's going to live up to his hype, and maybe Flores walks into a situation with a and and then does a rebuild like he did before around a quarterback this time. Um, that might work out well for him, and and it's warmer than Minnesota. Could I'm really hoping that doesn't happen. I, I I've heard another name floating around with the Jacksonville job that I'm really, really, really hoping that they hire. Have you heard this one yet? No, I haven't. Your boy Bill O'Brien. <laughs> I would love it. Absolutely love it. However, I do I do think Bill O'Brien's a good coach. He's just an awful general manager. Yeah, that's a good point. Have you guys heard my theory about what's happening with that Jags job? I, I, I found a theory for what the hell happened yesterday. Okay, so Eberflus um, was said to have put off the Jaguars interview, right? Um, so my theory, because, again, we nobody knows how, how the Colts lose that game to Jacksonville. Like, there's no explanation. So my theory is that Eberflus backdoored a deal – uh, for the Jags job, he's going to end up as a Jags head coach. But the deal was he had to call the worst game of his life, and he had to tell him what the Colts' offensive game plan was going to be going into that game. Um, because I mean, that that's the only explanation I have. I, and I I also uh, selfishly hope Eberflus gets a job somewhere else so that that defensive coordinator spot opens up. Yeah. All right. All right. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we head into the playoffs? Playoffs. Um, I'll say this as politely as I can, but Colts fans need to chill out on the fire Chris Ballard talk because I've seen that quite a bit too. I, I had to. I had to stop looking at social media comments yesterday. It, I, it's just it. It was so ignorant and over emotional. Just everybody, just knee jerk. Everybody's ready to just blow the whole place up and. Uh, it's first of all uh, it's just football man <laughs> but uh it's not that bad uh, i mean the, uh, w- P- indianapolis has been so spoiled uh with peyton manning and i man i've been a colts fan since they moved there in, in 84 and i went through a lot of really shitty seasons as a colts fan and some of these people just got on the bandwagon when they drafted peyton manning and then bought their shiny jerseys and and go to the games, and they uh, teams go through this, man. Or, or everybody would win a Super Bowl. Um, and I think I, I, people just have way too high expectations about things. Um, they do need to chill out. And uh, again, that that whole bring back Kobe Brissett. I couldn't believe I still on week eighteen saw somebody say Brissett here. It's just delusional, man. It's ridiculous. I like Reich, and I hope, I hope he gets his head out of his ass and pulls this through. If nothing, if for no other reason, then we'll, if if they fire him next year, then we got to start all over. So we're looking at least two to three years before we're back in the playoffs anyway. Potentially, but, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, wild card weekend. First game we're going to talk about is the Raiders at the Bengals. Uh, the Bengals completely. Took a shit on the field, <clears throat> uh, and the Raiders, you know, won four in a row. I I don't know. I'm I'm half tempted to take the Raiders. I don't know what I don't know what's going on, but whatever it is, it's going the right right direction. And um, I know they're in Cincinnati. I'd love to hear what both of you guys have. 
Well, Joe Joe Burrow was out last game, uh, and since he, I don't know how many other starters Cincinnati rested, but I'd imagine Burrow wasn't the only one. Uh, one. So the, the the Bengals team that you saw this last Sunday isn't uh, a good representation of their team as a whole. At one point, they were the hottest team in football. Uh, They're completely dominating, uh, but right now the Las Vegas Raiders are probably the hottest team in football. Uh, so they got a lot going their way. I think this is going to end up being a really really good game between them uh and i'm not really sure on who i'm gonna take as a pick yet uh i'll get back to that here in a couple minutes if you guys want to say something about these two teams yeah i mean there's no denying that the raiders have been hot um they've been getting the job done one way or another they're winning game that's really all that matters in the nfl but with the Bengals being as hot as they are i think with so many starters sitting out of one week you know, we've seen as Colts fans, the Colts used to sit people for the last one or two games every season because they had the number one or two locked up. So um, we know that there's going to be some rust to knock off. And so I think this game is going to be closer than it should, but I still just don't see a way that the Bengals lose this game. They just have so much firepower on offense. I don't think the Raiders defense is phenomenal by any means I don't think they can stop Jamar Chase and T Higgins from going off I don't think they can stop Joe Burrow from throwing 400 yards if he wanted to Um, and Joe Mixon is healthy and in the lineup so um, I expect the Bengals to come in and dominate the way they have been and run right through the Raiders well it all sounds good uh, but I saw uh, the Jags beat the Colts yesterday and now I don't have any confidence in, in anything anymore it it should be a good game, as as far as that goes. I don't know who I'm going going to pick, but you know we don't have to pick them right now. So, all right. So the next game is Steelers and Kansas City. Is that right? Patriots no, and Bill, Patriots yeah. and Bills. Patriots and Bills. Uh, Saturday night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Patriots and Bills. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if the Bills, with their, you know, in the postseason, this is where they wanted to get. Uh, if they can, they can go ahead and 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 be the team that we've expected them to be all year. I'm not really too impressed that they beat up on the Jets like they did, but I'm not real impressed that the Dolphins beat up on the Patriots like they did. But all things push comes to shove, man. I got to take Belichick. I think I'm going to take the Patriots on this one. Ooh. Yeah, so they played each other, what, three times in the last seven weeks or something something crazy like that. Uh, we all know that the Patriots won the first meeting. It was awful conditions up in Buffalo. Uh, the Bills turned around, came back, beat them in uh, Foxborough. So I think this will be another very good game to watch. Um, but because of just how good Josh Allen is uh, and the fact that they're at home, I think I don't know what exactly the wind condition is supposed to be like or the, the – uh, the snow or rain if there's anything like that uh but i do know it's supposed to be really cold so it could be another ground and pound type game and if that's the case it's definitely going to favor the patriots uh but i think ultimately the bills are going to pull this one out yeah so the the weather for this game uh is they're obviously going to be in buffalo it's going to be um a high of 26 that day Um, But, you know, the wind, uh, it says nine miles an hour here, precipitation 20%. So it should be, you know, pretty good weather. It's just going to be really cold. Um, Definitely not the conditions from the first game. So I expect Josh Allen and this offense to come out and fire on all cylinders. They're getting, um, you know, uh, Cole Beasley and Gabriel Davis back in the lineup. They're they're, they're about as healthy as any team in the NFL is going into the playoffs uh, from guys that they had at the beginning of the season. So um, I expect the Bills to come in and take care of business. Um, We've seen Mac Jones over this last half of the season in some pretty big spots uh, not play very well especially against this Bills team just a couple weeks ago, did not have a good game against them, um, even throwing a bunch of times. So I expect that to be the case again. I think the Bills uh, come in here and get the job done at home. Uh, Over under on this game is the lowest of the week at 43. You think it's over or under? Over because the Bills score 30 points. (laughs) I agree. Yeah. That's a good point there. Uh, I also – I wanted to point out um, with the Raiders and the Bengals to back up for a second. Uh, the last time the Raiders and the Bengals met each other in the postseason was in 1991, and the Raiders kicked off the Bengals' 31-year playoff losing streak. Um, I don't know if that constitutes a monkey on your back or not, but um, 
it was semi interesting to bring what's, up. What's 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 that old statistic I've seen floating around that a the, text message has never yeah. been sent or yeah, no text message in human history has ever been sent saying the Bengals won a playoff game. Yep. Wow. <laughs> yep. The uh, first uh what was that? The first text was sent in ninety four or something like that. Wow. Nineteen ninety two. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. Uh, all right. We'll see if that holds true or not. Uh, all right. So the uh, third and final AFC wildcard game um, is the Steelers at the Chiefs on Sunday. And um, the Steelers have no business being here. I, I, I get it. Steelers fans. And, and I don't mean, to, and I don't mean this derogatory. I don't mean to make fun of them at all. They're yeah, excited. He got one more. You do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shit on the Steelers. It's fine. They, they, they're excited. He got one more game and they believe he's going to, this is, this is where it ends. This is big Ben's last game. Chiefs are too good. They, they're too seasoned. They're too well coached. And the Steelers just have struggled. They shouldn't even be here. Uh, first of all, the Colts shouldn't have lost and everybody knows that. So that, that just fixes that right there. That there's no contest in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, the Chiefs' defense been looking phenomenal as of late. Uh, what really, I've I've watched Mahomes a little bit this year, and he's just he's not the same guy as he has been the last couple years. He's he's missing all these throws and all that. Um, but when it comes to playoff time, man, he he likes to dial it in. Uh, I'm anticipating him doing it again, and the Chiefs are going to make another strong push towards the Super Bowl. And it's going to start here with this routing of this, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, KC's favored by 12 and a half. No doubt in my mind they'll, they'll eclipse that this week. Yeah, I would agree. I think there's going to be a complete domination by the Chiefs, letting them know why they were the preseason favorite in the AFC. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was really not a whole lot to say that you guys didn't. I think Chiefs dominate. All right. Um, all right. So on the on Sunday, the NFL, the NFC games start. And at 1 p.m. is the Eagles at the Bucks. I like, I, I, look, I'm impressed. I, they proved me wrong. I, I, I dogged them out, had four or five wins to begin the season for the Eagles. Uh, they, they've done way better than that. I, I'd like to see what Jalen Hurts is going to be able to do in the future. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think his playoff win career starts on Sunday. Uh, just like the the Chiefs, they're just they're too seasoned, they're too good, they're too, uh, too many veterans, too well coached. Um, this this shouldn't be a contest. Uh, I think it's going to be a closer game than everybody anticipates. Uh, ultimately, I think Tampa Bay is going to run away with it in the end, but I think it'll be a pretty good game starting out at least. Uh, but the thing is, is it's it's the playoffs. It's Tom Brady. Everybody knows how well he plays, how well he gets his team ready to play, and I'm sure that hats off to the coaching staff. That's probably more the coaching staff than Tom Brady. But um, when it comes time for the playoffs, man, he's at his best. And I definitely think he will dial it in as well and put it to the Eagles. Should be a close game. Tampa Bay is favored by eight and a half. I think uh, the Bucks win by at least seven. They'll probably eclipse at eight and a half as well. But like I said, should be a good game, at least starting out the first half. Yeah, that's how I feel too. I think for a little while this game is going to be close. Um, but I think what the – determining factor here how this game is going to go is that you know the Eagles for much of the season you know beginning of the season they weren't running the ball at all when they decided to start running the ball they've been dominating people on the ground um, but the Buccaneers over the last two seasons uh, with that front seven have been the best against stopping the run and I think they have better talent against stopping or for stopping the run than the Eagles have for running the ball um, so I think they'll be able to stop that and that'll go in the Bucks' favor and even though I think the Buccaneers can be thrown on, I just watched, uh, you know, Arthega Whiteside. He dropped a wide open touchdown. Like Jalen Rager hasn't come on. Jalen Hurts just doesn't have the pieces to throw to. He has Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. Outside of that, there's not many options um, for him uh, to go to in that offense. And they're probably going to get into situations where they have to pass the ball. And so I, you just can't trust that side of their offense. And in the playoffs, that kind of shit matters. So I will be taking the Buccaneers. Yep. All right. Next game up is 49ers and the Cowboys. This is an old story rivalry for you whippersnappers that are too young to remember uh, back starting, I think, in. I, was like I don't even remember the year. Like that. 
Huh? Like 1982 or something like that. Yeah, first it was time 81 or 82. Uh, Dwight Clark caught the end zone in the corner of the touchdown. I'm sure you both have seen that replay a gazillion times. It's kind of the passing of the torch uh, to Bill Walsh's 49ers from the story Cowboys out of the 60s and 70s. Uh, but they haven't they haven't played each other in the playoffs since 1994. So this is kind of a rekindling of that. Um, by all rights, the Cowboys should win this game, but damn, these 49ers are scrappy and they love, they love to ruin someone's day. They'd love to ruin the Cowboys day. I, I just, uh, you know, on the safe side, I, I don't see that happen. I think that if the Cowboys, are, I mean, they're, they're stacked, they're talented. If they're legit, they got to win this game. Um, and uh, so I'm going to go with them. Yeah, by all intents and purposes, everybody would think that the Cowboys are supposed to win this game. But really, I think the 49ers can get it done. Uh, this is predicted to be the highest scoring game with an over under of 51 on the week. Uh, it's going to be a shootout. The 49ers, I don't remember the number. I think they've won seven out of the last nine or something like that. Uh, they only lost by uh, a touchdown to Seattle in Seattle. That was a divisional game and three points to the Tennessee Titans. But other than that, they've been playing really good football. Uh, they've been dominating with Debo Samuel. George Kittle's getting back in the groove. Jimmy G's not playing bad at all. Uh, so it's this 49ers team can make a push here. Uh, so I think out of all these games, really, this would probably be the most exciting one to watch. There's going to be a lot of scores, a lot of touchdowns. Uh, so it's going to be a good one. I want to root for the 49ers here. I think ultimately the Cowboys are going to pull this one off. Uh, but regardless, it should be a very close, exciting game. Yeah, I also think this is going to be probably the best game of the weekend. Um, you know, and, and I think we're well, going into week 18. What I told you guys when we were talking about should the Eagles sit players, should the Cowboys sit players, and and I thought the Cowboys needed to play whether the Eagles were sitting people out or not. I thought that offense had to play so they could find a rhythm, gain some confidence, and they did. Dak made some throws, even against some second stringers. Uh, Dak put some balls into some really tight spaces. He looked really good uh, against Philadelphia going into the playoffs. So that's the deciding factor for me. I think both these teams off on the offensive side of the ball have playmakers that, that can make things happen in this one. But I just think the edge goes to Dallas with their defense. And as nasty as their defense is, I think they're going to be on Jimmy G all day long. They're going to force Jimmy G into some bad decisions. We'll probably see Trayvon Diggs get a pick six in this game. All right, and the final game uh, is what could end up being another really, really good game, uh, the Cardinals at the Rams. Uh, this could go either way. I, you know, the 49ers upset the Rams yesterday. I think these two teams split and both won on the road. Uh, and this one's – I mean, if that holds up, then L.A.'s in trouble there because it, the game is in L.A. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. And since I don't have to pick, I'm probably not going to. Um, I just – I think this is going to be a really, really good game. Um, I, I'd like to. I'd like to think that the Rams have the edge here, but if the Cardinals can regain some form from you know pre, uh, the previous form from the season, they could probably come in and win this pretty easy. But what do you guys think? Yeah, I think I think it has really good potential to be a really good football game. Um, the main thing is is whether Matt Stafford can avoid the turnovers. If he can do that, I think the Rams overall have a better team offensively, defensively. They'll definitely be able to put it to the Cardinals and take out a win. But if Stafford's turning the ball over and uh, Kyler Murray's playing lights out, the Cardinals could very easily pull this one out. The great thing about this game is that it is on Monday night. So not only do we have Saturday playoff games and Sunday playoff games, but now we have a wild card game on Monday night. Uh, you can't get much more excited about that than that. Three days in a row of playoff football here in the NFL. Uh, so this is going to be a good game as well. Uh, the Rams are favored by four. I'm taking the Rams on the spread here. But, hey, it's playoffs. Anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, this is probably the hardest game of the weekend to decide what's going to happen. When you really look into it, you know, Matthew Stafford been up and down this last, you know, six weeks or so. It's been a little iffy, um, but they've, you know, for the most part gotten the job done. They were still able to win the division. Um, but the Cardinals, the Cardinals also have sputtered. And didn't look better. And, and they're just, uh, they're an up and down team, but they're better on the road which is why I feel like the Cardinals should be the pick here. The road team won both of the games that they played in the regular season. And last week, 
uh, when we were talking about the Seahawks game and the Cardinals game, I told you the road team uh, or the, yeah, the road team had won uh, the previous game in that matchup. And I went with the road team again. I feel like I'm going to be wrong. Um, not taking the Cardinals. I'm going to take the Rams because I want to see Matthew Stafford win a playoff game. That's the goal for this postseason, for the Bills to win the Super Bowl and for Matthew Stafford to win a playoff game. If that happens, I'll be a happy man. Um, so I will be taking the Rams in this, but would not be surprised if the Cardinals win. Okay. All right. All right. I want to hear your picks, Super Bowl picks. Uh, what do you think, Cafe? Packers, Bills. Yeah, yeah, it's uh I would definitely put the Packers in there on the NFC side. And yeah, it's it's got to be either the Bills or the Chiefs. Yeah. yeah I think the, the Bengals are a dark horse. They're, you know, they they certainly have the pieces in place to be able to make a run, but they're so young um and, and don't have the experience obviously zach taylor as a head coach doesn't have this kind of experience joe burrow doesn't have this kind of experience so can they get it done i mean sure um maybe there's a chance i just feel like um the, they've had they've had their times of being inconsistent and not being able to get things going in games and their defense uh giving up a bunch of points in games so um, you know, I'm, I'm less confident in the Bengals, but I could see an avenue where they're they're going to be one of the most dangerous teams. Okay, in this well, playoff let me run. L- let me make this question a little easier. Who's your who's your NFC championship teams? Mm, Packers, probably. I would say either the 49ers or the Cowboys. Whoever comes out of that game, really? Yeah, I like, I like the Packers and the Rams. I think. I think those two teams have what it takes on both sides of the ball to get to. Yeah, don't don't get me wrong. I would love to see the Rams in there. The, the Packers and the Rams in an NFC Championship game that would be a huge game to watch. What about the AFC, sure feels like Chiefs Bills, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Have to go with the Chiefs Bills. Yeah, it's uh this this. The one thing's for sure is this playoff season could be just as crazy as this regular season has been. There's a lot of teams here that could surprise people and accidentally find themselves in in one of these championship games uh, without anyone thinking they belong there. So, um, I, I and I, I posted something on our, uh, our social media today, or maybe it's last night. Um, you know that a crazy season made for a crazy last day, crazy a crazy ending. Hopefully it's going to make for uh, a crazy and entertaining, entertaining postseason. So, uh, all right. Anything else you want to say before we go? Yeah, real quick. Uh, who's your NFL MVP? Uh, the, at this point, I don't think there's any. Con- I think it's Aaron Rodgers. I don't think there's any contest. There's no, no, no chance. It's not Aaron Rodgers. Not yeah. Tom Brady. What about Brady? Yeah, I think because Tom Brady has such high expectations. It feels like the Bucks aren't living up to those expectations of previous Tom Brady play, and Rodgers is playing out his goddamn mind right now. And I and the Packers are, are probably the team to beat in the NFC. Everybody knows it, so I think just you know, there's probably some stats to back it up from just from a perception point. Um, it looks like Rodgers is is carrying this team on his shoulders and, and going to carry them into the Super Bowl. That, that's just that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the the factors that come into play for me are, are obviously touchdown-interception ratio. Um, I, th- I believe Aaron Rodgers now has three seasons in his career where he has more than 35 touchdowns and less than five interceptions. Uh, in NFL history, all other quarterbacks have only done that once. Um, so he, he did that again this year with, like, what, 37 and four. Um, so – and look, Tom, Tom has thrown the ball a lot, like literally has thrown the ball like 40 times a game. Um, so his numbers were bound to be bigger, which you could argue um, in that same point that because they relied on him more, he would be more valuable to, to their team. But I think um, when you talk about like the most valuable player in the entire league, it's the guy that turns the ball over less and scores a bunch of points. And that's Aaron Rodgers, without a doubt. 
solid, solid arguments. I, I was just playing devil's advocate because you know people out there are going to be pulling for Tom Brady here. Uh, when it comes to overall stats here, I'm sitting here looking at it. Right now, Brady is up uh, about 1,200 yards on the season in comparison to A-Rod. He also has six more touchdowns, but Hefe brought up a very good point of the touchdown-to-interception ratio where Tom Brady has three times more interceptions on the season than Aaron Rodgers does. Um, what I You also talked about the attempts. Uh, Brady has thrown 719 passing attempts this year compared to Aaron Rodgers, 531 and a rod in those 531, uh, has six less touchdowns. Uh, I think that's a difference of 188 passing attempts. So my pick personally, you guys already know Aaron Rodgers, but I just want to play a little bit devil's advocate and bring up Tom Brady. Cause you know, it's going to come down to one of those two guys. Just to add to that, Tom Brady did break another record, uh, yesterday where he threw, uh, let's see, 29 passes on Sunday, finished the season with 485, and uh, which broke Drew Brees' previous record of 471. You know, Brady, Brady's probably just going to smash just about everything if he continues to play. I, I don't, and, and I guess, uh, you know, he's a hero, Pepe, that he uh, defied Bruce Arians' commands and went in and made sure Grant got his $500,000 bonus. So not only does he have eight, Super Bowl or seven Super Bowl ti- oh, oh, was that a Freudian slip? I said eight. No, <laughs> it wasn't. Not only does he have seven rings, FA with two different teams, but he made sure his buddy got uh, a bigger paycheck than any of us will ever see. So. No, he did that last year with AB, and now all of a sudden, uh, Tom Brady's a bad guy. He's not going to let me get my paychecks. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't talked about that AB thing, uh, you know, since oh, we last have. week, huh? No, we haven't. A lot has happened since the last <laughs> discussion we had about that. <laughs> A lot has happened. You want you want to talk about it? No, nah, I, I quite honestly, I mean, it's it's actually kind of comical following along to see what is really going on. But um, at this point, I'm so over Antonio Brown. It's I just I don't even want to listen to it anymore. I don't want to talk about it or anything. I mean, the the thing that comes out of that situation for me is like after he put out his statement, which was like perfectly grammatically correct. He had (laughs) intentions. I mean, it was a great statement and and said what he needed to say. I think if he shuts up after that, he has a pretty good case at that point. There were a lot of people like, okay, he has a pretty good case here to be upset, I understand. And then he goes on to the Full Sin podcast and says some of the most arrogant shit I've ever heard a, a public figure say. And, and obviously talking about Tom Brady, you know, I, I throw a lot of hate at Tom and a lot of shade at Tom and always will. But, I mean, guys like him, you've never heard a bad thing about Tom. People love Tom Brady, so – um, I, and Gronk as well. People love Gronk. I, I just think the shots he took, it was uh, it was immature. He's somebody that's closing in on 40. Um, you know, it's just everything about the situation after the statement has been childish and, and taken things in a completely different direction. Yeah, uh, very well said. That's exactly what I was going to say, that this guy, uh, I, he went into much greater detail than I was going to. He's just not doing himself any favors. Uh, and he just makes entirely too much noise and stirs up too much shit uh, for anybody to even care whether he's telling the truth or not. That's what he. Do- that's what he doesn't get. Nobody at this point, because he won't shut up. Nobody cares whether he's telling the truth. They just want him to shut up. And um, he's certainly not doing himself any favors. And I have to agree with a guy like Tom Brady. Is the only reason he was in New England and the only reason he was in Tampa. That um, and now he's just burnt that bridge. Do you think anybody, anybody's going to stick their neck out for that guy after what he did to Tom Brady? I don't think so. Yeah, and he's talked shit in the past about Ben Roethlisberger. Like, and these are two quarterbacks that people put in the top 10 all the time. Like, yeah. if he's going to talk shit about them, every other quarterback's going to be like, no, I don't want that dude on my team. He's going to say some stupid shit about me. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I think he's done. Uh, they were talking about him. I, I guess he, he may sign a contract with USFL. I don't know if you guys heard that. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably where he'll end up. I don't see an NFL team taking a chance on him. So, Nope. Um, okay. Anything else you guys want to say before we go? No. It's, it's playoff time. It's exciting. Playoffs? 
Uh, oh, I, I, I don't know if you guys notice on uh, a lot of Colts social media threads, uh, Jim Mora raised his ugly head again yesterday. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was quite comical, quite apropos, I thought. Um, for Jim to Jim to come back yesterday. Um, all right, that does it for this week. I want to remind you to, uh, to be sure to show us some love, like, share, and subscribe. Tell all your friends, tell your grandma, sign up for Patreon. We got a big season coming up, but we're going to continue to walk through this season with you um, and break down each of the playoff games all the way uh, to the Super Bowl, and then we will have forthcoming information for next week. Uh, I'm sorry, next season. Uh, and uh, remember, you can catch the show on uh, WUBI Ubiquity Radio Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, and you can find more information at WUBI.live. And, uh, of course, we'll see you back here again next week for uh, to recap the wild card playoff games and get ready for the divisional round. So until then, thanks for joining us. Enjoy the games. Deuces. Deuces.